Hello and welcome people to the Proto the Cup series by Smashcast TV. We are here in the SEA version of this tournament with the last match of the day. In this case between Geek Fam and Nasty Potatoes. And man are they duking it out. And this is the winner's brackets and whoever wins goes to the semi-final. That will be played in just three days versus the guys of MVP Revolution. And whoever loses will have to go to the loser's brackets and face the winner of Mongols versus XD, Zhao Dian. Since it's not looking good for uh, Nasty Potatoes, uh, because the first game got won by Cake Fam, they decided to offer something insane, the Monkey King. Honestly, that nerf was pretty heavy on the Monkey King. Not being able to get Basho with that ultimate really nerfed his ability in, in the early game. So they reduced his BAT, they took away completely the damage that his ultimate does, so it's actually just a, a Monkey King's really good in the early game in the same way that it used to be, but he's not as powerful as he used to be in the late game, especially because that ultimate is just not useful anymore, it's just not the great ultimate, you can just fight in it, no problem, the Basho is not going to annoy you. So it's probably going to be a Monkey King that goes much more for Solo Crest than for utility items, and a Monkey King that decides to go for Basher, Desolator, etc. to increase the damage of his ultimate, that would make perfect sense. That said, Nasty Potato is still a pretty weak link, whereas Geek Fam are starting with pretty strong picks. They go for the lean up, straight up for Teehee, they say screw it, why not? I mean, we know, we banned the, they banned the Pawn Low Puck, so I'm just going to discover the Lina really soon, and also the Tinker. Pretty good idea. They combine that with a Rubik and can steal some good ultimates in this case, for example, the Warlock ultimate, or even the Upheaval, which is actually not that bad, stolen on Rubik. And they combine that with the Sanking to offer you a bit more team fight, but Sanking is much more consistent with this team fight and also offers a stun. While Rubik and Sanking are pretty strong uh, to combine with Lina, because you can easily spam the Light Strike Arrays, and if they now decide to pick a Trim Protector, for example, for the Sanking, not only do they have an Overgrowth, which completely stops the Monkey King, but more importantly, they also have a way to stop, to combine, to allow the Sanking to get farmed in the early game because of the high attack damage that Trim Protector can put out. The only thing they're afraid of now is if, if the enemy team picks a ranged carry that's particularly good against Sanking, like a Drow Ranger for example, they decide to go for a Juggernaut instead and oh, Geek Fam answer with a, with a Weaver, that is hard. Juggernaut does not have the best agility game in the world, Weaver will take away his armor and Juggernaut does not, doesn't do too well against physical damage despite his healing ward. In addition to that, healing the Weaver can easily take down that healing ward without much of a fuss. And Geek Fam also have not shown if they'd have an offlane or a support or a carry or what. Because Weaver could be offlane sanking support, it could be a sanking offlane Weaver carry, it could be a Weaver support sanking uh, support as well. Uh, sorry, it could be a Weaver support sanking offlane, it could be a Weaver carry sanking support. There's so many options. There's actually a, a good variety of options for Geek Fam here. And thus the last battle is going to be a bit hard. That Weaver is good regardless, especially against the Monkey King. Nasty Potatoes, easiest way to do, easiest way to deal with this is to pick an offlaner. They would love to go for the Abaddon and Legion Commander. Nyx Assassin though comes to mind as a particularly okay pick. There it is for Death Sama. And Geek Fam now have to ban out their fifth hero. And Geek Fam has a harder time, have a harder or easier time, sorry, uh, b uh, banning out this end, this mid in the end because. Yeah, they know what they're going to pick. The TA being the optimal pick here against the Lina. The other option is the OD, I suppose, for Nasty Potatoes. And it probably is what they're going to pick, an OD for Ponlo. It's all right. The Queen of Pain is the other option as well. So, knowing Ponlo, I kind of want to offer the Queen of Pain. The Queen of Pain is also better known against the Weaver. The OD seems a bit excessive, and it's not a hero that Ponlo particularly loves playing, and we all know how limited his hero pool is. Now, the question is, what the fuck do you ban if you're Nasty Potatoes? Honestly, my thought is Psyonix is definitely going to play that Weaver, but the second could definitely be a support sanking and it would work fine with them because Rubik is position 5. So they ban an offlaner, in this case the Axe. A Centaur looks good for a Geek Fam who is playing a Velo. The Darkseer is not in the pool, okay. The Centaur is alright, but it's not particularly something I love. The, ho the Clockwork, sorry I was going to call him Hookshot, would have also been good, but of course they're both banned. Night Stalker maybe? Night Stalker and then run into Sanking in the offlane? I'm kind of feeling that. I'm kind of feeling the Night Stalker here. It's really good against Nyx Assassin. Powerful against Monkey King. The Magnus the last pick for Nasty Potatoes. I was not expecting that. Magnus for Pondo in the mid lane next and we'll be running against uh, Lina. Okay. Okay. That's that's hard actually for the Magnus, but it's not too hard that you will be useless and the Magnus got a recent buff with his Academs. Actually boosts him slightly because he can now go for a more of a damage amplification mags the shockwave and the slow is actually really useful for you as you can spam it and you know the slow is kind of annoying let's see what geek fans had to go for as their last pick now seeing this magnus the centaur becomes even more powerful because of the stampede making sure nobody gets caught if they do want to go for supports the rubik is already really good but the earth spirit would have been a nice support position for or the ogre magi but i guess ogre magi is a bit killing it uh velo can play the sanking and then you can just run a support here for example Hmm. The Magnus would have been really good for Velo, actually, for Geek Fam as well. I didn't really consider that, but that would have been an easy, easy, easy kill. And the tip. 
Timbersaw is the pick for Geek Fam. Huh. Alright, that's uh, that's an interesting pick as a last pick for Geek Fam. And that's the potatoes. I have a way of dealing with him with an Ix Assassin. Ix Assassin is actually particularly good for Tim against Timbersaw. Timbersaw seems only concentrating on, on the Magnus. The Juggernaut also doesn't do, do too badly against him. Timbersaw also kind of counters the Monkey King. However, if you're running the Weaver as the carry, of course, in the Timbersaw and the offlane position, sacrificing a hero to deal with Magnus and Monkey King is not that big a deal. In fact, what they could even do is run Psionics with Sanking and Rubik in a offensive trial lane against the Juggernaut, and they, the Weaver should be able to win that offensive trial lane because of her range and, of course, because she's unkillable in an offensive trial lane because of her Sokuchi. And Nasty Potatoes have terrible, terrible picks to defend against in the tri -lane, right? So, Geek Fam use an offensive tri -lane, leave the t Timbersaw alone, preferably against the Nyx Assassin, who sh he should be able to win the lane regardless, even though Nyx Assassin's a bit annoying. Leave the Lena alone against Ponlo, because of course you're forcing the supports to stay with the Juggernaut, and then win the game as a result. That's not bad. Actually, I, I, I like uh, the... I like the idea here for the guys at... at Geek fam. They have a pretty solid lineup in terms of early game and team fight. The lanes are pretty strong. Nasty Potatoes went a bit old school, not really reading the new patch. I don't think the Monkey King is as strong as it used to be. The Warlock and the Juggernaut is a good combination, of course, but Geek fam could easily destroy that with a Weaver. The Lina didn't really get my. They got minor nerfs, honestly, if anything. Uh, so. Yeah, that Monkey King really doesn't infuse the trust he should in me. Uh, I think that mid game, you really relied on. You actually relied much more on the Monkey King than people think on his ultimate. Especially in the early game, it allows you to get so many easy kills against the Weaver. You rely a lot on that, being able to bash her. The Weaver's not going to care a lot if you if you use the Monkey King ultimate because he's just going to go in and not care if she's bashed or attacked or whatever because she has the time ups anyway. Oh. Stack says uh, Crimson. G says Sound. Uh, Oh, this the Crimson is actually disconnecting. Wow. Head chick? How, why is that the sound the head chick makes? These people with like fancy compendiums and all this stuff. Oh, Jesus. What am I supposed to do to compare to them? Just a poor caster, they barely. <laughs> you you want to see the, the how much money a caster makes? Not that much. Alright. So the initiation is starting. Good, um... Warding here by have the wing. They say good uh, a bit of warding here going on by Geek Fam just to start up. Whereas Crimson is doing the same. He might actually find the sanking, but not for now. Really good sentry place there. Uh, gives you vision. The top of that gives you actually a really good. Oh, and this ward is unexpected. Usually you put the ward here because you can see the banner room. This ward is uh, expected if you they're gonna cut down the trees or alternatively if you want to see their shrine better. And they don't actually expect this uh, weird range of vision. The sentry around this area is a bit bad unless you want to specifically take on this ward and even so you would put it around here so you can check for this ward over here which is much more important anyway let's stop talking about the warding game let's present the teams real quick my name is the swordfish i'll be your castle for today let's see who is playing what today so nasty potatoes on the radiant side and the, as the good guys we have death Sam playing the nyx assassin in the off lane position first support is going to be crimson on the warlock the carry being juggernaut played by tmt the second support being eden on the monkey king and finally podlo is the magnus in the off lane position as for geek fam we have Teehee playing the lena in in the mid lane and the Weaver by Psyonix as the carry. Timbersaw played by Velo in the off lane position. The first support being Rubik played by Ned. And finally, in the second support position, it's Raji on that Nyx or on that <laughs> Quixlis. Sorry, uh, Sanking, Sanking. God, I keep calling him a bunch of names and it's never the right one. Oh, it's 7 CST, really? Oh, okay, never mind, we have, we have time. Alright, so I'll be casting the rest of the games today, I'm just checking because uh, apparently there's a final later between Angie and Singularity, but Singularity has a slight advantage. Anyway, that's going to be interesting to see um, after we watch a bit of Geek Fam and, and Nasty Potatoes. It's nice to, to cast the conclusion of the tournament, even though I didn't ma I didn't cast most of the European tournament because, of, well, it's Joe DX tried casting it, but it's nice casting the conclusion of the tournament because that feels like, oh, right, it's done, and then someone got their prize pool, it's, it's like work done, you go home, it's, it's the only way you actually get to go home and say, right. I'm done for the week, guys. I'm actually done for the week for the casting and whatnot. It's a nice feeling. Right. Looking at the lanes, and I, I like the, these. Oh, these two wards are actually very well put. I placed. Uh, wasn't Net that put them? 
or was it? I think it was Net that put at least one of them. The other one was put by Raji. Pretty smart, huh? Because look at this this other word. We'll talk about it in a second. But you don't you can't really put a sentry to discover this. But Alina doesn't really need much more than this side of the lane, so it's quite cleverly put. Um, and look how she's angling the creeps as well. And Paula will always come from the left side. Why? Because this right side is already covered by this ward, so it actually gives you much more vision than you think. Um, but the left side is the only thing they need, and, and if the Magnus decide to go there by action accident or whatever, and he has no wards either, so they're able to really crush him. In fact, where are the wards for the guys at Nasty Potatoes? One ward over here doesn't give that great vision. It's very... Uh, a ward that's only designed to stop the timber saw, and I guess some rotation. Some rotations. A ward to sketch rotations. I get that. And where's the second ward? I can't tell. Doesn't really show me. Oh, okay, that's a stun. And Velo, actually, even with reactive armor, might go down Eden. Luckily, that's it has the jingle mastery, so they're not going to actually attack him or try to punish him for this action. But mm, the well, the timber saw does not die at the very least, which is pretty good. Even attacks Eden a bit, because why not? And this is the this is the timber saw challenge, which is kind of mango early on the lane because you need it, but you also need it for soul ring. So you wonder, hmm, is that mango going to survive till the end of a lane, or will you have to use it for a soul ring? It's actually a really good buff to anyone that uses soul ring in, in the early game because you can get a mango fairly early on and it doesn't hurt you at all. Tiki seems to be going for a bottle though instead of going straight up for the bloodstone. And in fact, Magnus is actually winning the lane against Tiki, which is surprising. This aggressive trial of Psyonix is not really working wonders in terms of keeping the supports at bay. In fact, the Monkey King has just decided to rotate top, and Psyonix is only, only a objective here is to really harass TMT. But they seem to have given up on TMT because the last difference is now starting to become considerable. Three last sits to nine. I mean, he's missed six last sits at the very least. In fact, I know he's missed much more because he's made it two. So TMT has lost a lot early on. And only with the Quelling Blade, I don't know if he's going to be able to rival the Weaver. His base attack damage in the early game is very like low. And Psyonix, on the other hand, is actually quite high. Look at how much he's harassing them. Without the Gemini attack, even. Uh, <laughs> it's really clever getting the last sit there. And Crimson, of course, can heal him. But the Shadow Word level one is not that powerful. Um, no, careful. I'm actually gonna lose that last hit. That's unfortunate. The Shadow World level 1 is only a bit of harassment. Okay, they're, they're pinging and they go on Velo. There it is. Eden has no stun. They do have the Impale from the Sama. Oh no, Velo. They he just discovered the Timber Chain. Why are they not attacking him? I just, I guess they don't want to. I understand now the ward because of the way they're playing. Oh, Ponlo, careful. About to die to the Dragon Slave damage alone. He has no infused raindrops just yet. Finally, we'll get them. But of course, the bottle's available on the Lena from behind. Net comes in. The Dragon Slave not quite catching Ponlo. And the Rubik comes from behind. All he has is telekinesis, but that's all he needs, really, because they only have to show Ponlo. Where's the Rubik and Initiate from? From in top lane, Velo. Please don't die while I'm casting this. There it is. They find Ponlo finally. Telekinesis ready. The Dragon Slave. Last Rekari was hit first. And Dragon Slave to finish him off. That is a first blood. Going to the Lena. And the guys from Geek Fam starting to get the advantage this game as well, apparently. Raji Shadow Warded and helped out. No, the shockwave comes from Pondo. Actually kills a couple of creeps. It's not going to be that big a deal, though. Ooh, Raji. There's a Burrow Strike available, so he can still stun out TMT. This is a bit dangerous. The Burrow Strike, the Swarm starts taking away armor. There's a Blade Fury, though, to take this away. And lack of Shukuchi. Lack of Shukuchi, Selenix. They knew that the Shukuchi was on cooldown, and they punished him as a result. However, the Juggernaut dies. Now the Sanki goes onto the poor Warlock, and Ned will ensure this kill. Great rotation by Ned, turning an unfavorable gank, uh, or not really unfavorable gank, unfavorable attack, I suppose, by the Juggernaut into a very favorable one favorable one <laughs> because the rubik's obviously came there and they took the kill on the warlock getting a bit more farm in their supports the weaver did die first which is unfortunate uh, of course that allows the tmt or tmt to get a lot of experience out of it but the, he still got the kill against the juggernaut if i'm mistaken um or they still got the kill against the juggernaut which uh, even though the weaver lost experience that's not the main goal she wants to get some gold she's still got assist gold the net worth is, is quite close so it's okay for geek fam overall that was a, a bit of uh, farming for the supports as well getting the sanking a bit of farm in the early game is never a bad idea roger going for the triangle boots and straight up into the blink dagger i can only imagine that's the most common thing to do on the sanking nowadays oh. and the top lane velo is really being harassed by eden that jingle mastery is becoming quite annoying but of course, Velo doesn't care that much, and he can take away the Monkey King's agility easy with a Whirling Death. And he also has, of course, that Timber Chain. <clears throat> no, Tihi, careful against Ponlo. Lystra Karay hitting him. Ponlo. Uh, I mean, does, is he aware that there's a 
possible Dragon Slave there and the Laguna's Blade. I think he could have died. Dragon Slave, Laguna's Blade. Lagoon Slave hits him, Dragon's Blade kills him. But he was trying to get the Life Strike Array and be cheeky about the whole combo. Once Lina hits level 6 and you're any hero that doesn't have an escape mechanism, it's such a harsh reality you live in where you're like, okay, I can go near her. Nope, nope, I don't know why I can't because he has the Laguna's Blade. Oh no, Net coming in. They're gonna start with Life Strike Array. Now the Laguna's Blade as well. The Dragon Slave, not enough mana. They have the Fate Bolt, but Ponla will survive this. Laguna's Blade really wasted there because of the. A lack of a Dragon Slave. And of course, it would have killed him anyway. And meanwhile, in the bottom lane, TMT losing a lot of armor, but getting a lot of HP thanks to that Shadow Ward. That Burrow Strike is not going to kill him, but Psyonix is committed to this. She doesn't have a time left. Burrow Strike will hit off onto the Warlock, and Crimson will die first. TMT still wanting to attack the, the Sand King, but it's a bit difficult when Psyonix just got the kill and is threatening around TMT level 4, Psyonix level 5. Once he hits that time lapse, man, you're going to be really, really screwed. There's no way you can kill Weaver. Juggernaut actually does not do well against the Weaver at all because he can evade your Battle Fury early on, or your Blade Fury early on, sorry. Uh, your Omni Slash also can get evaded by a Shokuchi simply, but if that doesn't work because they have Dust or Sentries or whatever, you can time lapse it away, and that's not a problem. And you evade all the damage, or you can even tank all the damage and time lapse it at the last second because it actually bursts damage over five seconds. So either way, Weaver is more than happy to tank that Omni Slash damage as long as she doesn't die, of course, or she doesn't get stunned by a Basher or whatever. So... In this game, the, the carry is the carry matchup, I suppose, is definitely favorable to the guys at the Geek Fam. Now, the difference in net worth is not considerable yet. It's only, I mean, it's, they're actually pretty equal. Lalina is the one that's actually snowballing out of control. He has 3,800 gold. You compare this, compare this with Death Sama, you're like, oh, wait, Death Sama's only 1,100 away. Sure, but that's a Nyx Assassin. What is he going to do with 1,100 gold? Seriously, besides Arcane Boots, you don't really need anything else with Nyx Assassin to be effective because you have the Vendetta. Oh, or in the mid lane as well, Pond looking at that to Tihi. Even though, finding Tihi head on, and he has a Light Strike Array, has to use it. Otherwise, we'll get killed by the Nyx Assassin. Death Sama comes in, collects a bit more gold than Impale. However, that's uh, in exchange for a kill on Pondo. So, Lena will not be too unhappy about that, frankly. She's going for Shadow Blade first, acknowledging her incredible domination. I love that idea. Screw the Bloodstone if you can go for the, sh the Shadow Blade and get much more kills. I mean, you can get, m what, Shadow Blade... I call it Shadow Fiend. Shadow Blade uh, minute nine or so. I'm honestly looking at her net worth and her gold per minute right now. You can get Shadow Blade around minute nine, and if you get a minute nine, then you can start getting for kills easy. Nope, like no problem, no questions asked. And you also deal a ridiculous amount of damage, of physical damage. I mean, no, it's a Sonic doesn't have the timeout, so it's very close to getting it. Tihi, meanwhile, is going to join this lane and decide to attack the Juggernaut. I think it's quite easy to get a Burrow Strike off him because all they need afterwards is a Light Strike Array. They have a board to give him full vision. Alina doesn't want to show herself entirely. Going to the trees. Very good usage of the vision. Oh, they're going to see that Sama. They know he's around. They're just waiting for him to kind of walk around. Tihi's going to show himself because he knows it. He is, yeah, he's been discovered. Light Strike Array is still available. So, honest, what are you just grabbing the Courier? The Ring of Aquila and also the Infused Raindrops. I think it's a Magic Stick Infused Raindrops actually they just got, but whatever. Oh, Raji is in range finally. They're, they're pinging this though. That's only Barrow level 2. Never mind. That Barrow level 2 has no range. You need level 3 at the very least to attack. Oh, TMT is trying to cut down these trees. Maybe an easy kill if you just stunned out TMT. Oh, they destroyed the sentry. Last Rocker Ray comes a bit too late. Raji starting to take a bit of damage to the Blade Fury. This whole engagement seems like a mistake. But Geek Fam realizes this in time and decide to take Tihi away. Meanwhile, the Rubik has actually been farming this bottom, this middle lane, and acquiring all those levels that he should have had earlier. And even though the net worth of the Timber Saw is quite low he's not i mean he's still gonna get a, a, a bloodstone in a decent timing because of his natural build up towards it's, it's quite beneficial with the arcane boots and whatnot the net worth is actually above the juggernaut so he's completely fine and since he farms faster than the juggernaut he's not gonna have much trouble getting that important item now in the middle, the like I said, Sionix is the big hero here that's actually being able to farm pretty well for this team. But of course, he's going to go for the Midas, trying to take advantage of this farm. And that's not going to help him too much when it comes to the mid-game and it comes to, you know, dealing with these, <laughs> with Geek Fam's heroes. Uh, Nasty Potatoes only has the ability right now to kind of gank, right? Uh, using the Nyx Assassin and the Monkey King, use Smoke Ganks maybe, to try to get those kills because otherwise... I mean, if it comes to the team fight, you haven't sank. I might not have Epicenter yet, but as a Burrow Strike, that's already enough. And a Timbersaw, of course, who already deals a lot of damage. Look at Pondo. He's decided to go to the top lane, the off laner. That's a pretty smart idea. Letting, letting the Nyx Assassin, or preferably the Juggernaut, take the middle lane. But of course, it's really hard for him to deal with the Timbersaw as well. And oh no, the Nyx Sand King. See how the Burrow Strike? They have to use Omni Slash to commit to this. Now, the Swarm, they know that they have no Omni Slash in the enemy team, so this could not be too hard to kill. However, the rest of Geek Cam are, not, are a bit dubious about going in. The Nyx Assassin does have one level of mana burn, quite smart of him to do so. Uh, as he's able to now really crush over the Weaver and even the, uh, the Timbersaw by disallowing their aggression by just using a simple monitor. It's quite effective to do. 
We've seen him multiple times. We've seen what he just did to the Weaver. Putting her in a range where you have to decide between using Shukuchi or getting the enough mana for time lapse so you can actually be more aggressive. And if you do use Shukuchi, you won't be able to time lapse. Time lapse doesn't give you any mana, so again, it's really powerful. Oh, let's see. Attack from the three weaver. Three weavers. <laughs> Attack from the three weavers. Interesting. Not getting much. Being well on the top lane though. They do catch a Magnus. One most hit. Paulo starts to heal with the shrine. And Tiki might not be able to get the kill. They had a dragon slave. But oh, that one HP and the shrine healing helped him out so much. In comes the Timbersaw. Great burst. Like they still want to kill Paulo to eventually that team it. And they will do so. Raji, careful because he's in the middle of the. Yeah, who cares? Who cares about the Monkey King ultimate? Yeah, it's just a wasted ultimate now. Nobody cares, dude. It's a terrible ultimate now. They've really nerfed it. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But um, that was just a good play by Velo and, and Raji to say, screw it. I mean, we can kill this Magnus and then leave because we are pretty tanky. We're both strength heroes. It's not a bad idea to do this. Oh, no, Desama. Why would you go on him? Actually, because you have a Chakram and Desama can just be cut in half like the buggy he is. Oh, that was a really good initiation by the Monkey King. However, TMT dies in the bottom lane. Velo still wants to fight this. That, that's the Impale. The Monkey King is honestly dealing no damage here. So, Velo's just walking this away <laughs> and still chasing for death sama now finally realizes this might be a bad idea in comes the magnus comes with the shock with even the rp that's a lot of magical damage onto him but the reactive armor is going to help him considerably they had low stunned again and there it is the kill they wanted a dead timber saw but it's in exchange for a dead for a juggernaut so in the end it's actually pretty even lena herself already has a shadow blade and i can only presume that's how they got the kill onto tmt that's it the Juggernaut has 3,000 net worth. In comparison, Alina has 5,600. That's the already considerable difference. She's your main carry. The other main carry in this case is Psionics. This is the issue. We keep comparing the Juggernaut to the... Oh, wait. Epicenter catches... Oh! Beautiful balance strike to stop the Epicenter. Beautiful balance strike. Now, the... Oh, no. The Blade Fear is going to kill Raji eventually. Unless... Unless that Sandstorm helps him out. But the Shadow Ward is going to finish him off regardless. Now they go on to Crimson. Good Laguna's Blade. But the Lina will die as a result. And Velo's not getting har harassed considerably by this Omni Slash. The TMT will be able to destroy Velo. And with that, they actually get their last kill onto Ned. He's stolen only the Mana Burn, so he doesn't care too much if he loses this. But of course, he doesn't want to die. Eden is just following him to the ends of the earth. It says, no, fuck you. Telekinesis back, and he'll get accomplish it. Alright, that that is pretty bad for Geek Fam. I, I think they kind of went in a bit there, a bit aggressively for no reason. The Warlock, of course, getting destroyed by the Luminous Blade. That was okay for Alina, but it's not worth your own death, obviously, because you're worth so much in terms of net worth, so you rather leave it behind. Oh, let's see, T. Nice Dark Array, finding TMT, kills the Healing Ward, but the Impale, really good job. Now they're gonna stop Tihi again, and they might be able to kill him twice! As TMT survives, the, t the TP from the Weaver does not complete, and Ned's like, okay, what just happened? I have a vendetta, though, so he could actually be pretty useful here in killing TMT. Meanwhile, on the top lane, Raji's being followed by Ponlo. There's one more shockwave, po and Ponlo has the ability to kill Raji here, but of course, there's a way for the burst to happen. Raji will survive. Raji will survive, because Ponlo doesn't, you know, doesn't commit to this too hard. It's only a support, so it's better to just keep farming in some situations. It does seem like Nasty Potatoes are recovering pretty well. I'm... More hopeful in their mid game because, of course, you still have a timber stop. I mean, if Alina stops dying here, then the guys with SD Potatoes would have a hard time again. Alina just kind of lost all her net worth, and the whole idea of going for the Shadow, Fl the Shadow Blade is lost when you start committing suicide that often. She went for the Life Strike Array damage, which honestly with the Shadow Blade makes sense, but at the same time, you you lose effectivity without the cast range. And if you're planning on dying this much and being kind of a. I necessarily support Lina. But the. Utility Lina? Then me, maybe. Uh, net. Oh, careful. Look, he's available. They're going to use the Vendetta. They're going to kill Crimson quick, quickly. The Shadow Ward only gives him a couple more he health seconds. <laughs> a health. <laughs> I said, a couple more health seconds. He says, a couple more seconds before he goes down. Raji just stopped the TP with a Burst Strike. Pretty good Burst Strike. And getting that level 4 Burst Strike, so valuable. So, such a good skill. I mean, the only thing he needs now is a Blink Dagger. And then they'll have a little bit more of a peak in terms of utility. Especially his two supports. I mean, Psionics has been crushed this game. I mean, we've been comparing Timbersaw to the Juggernaut for the whole time. Like I said, it's not the right comparison. The right comparison is to the Weaver. And though she did go for the Midas, which is going to help her considerably. Especially against a late game Juggernaut. It's still kind of hard for the uh, Geek Femme squad. Because they rely a lot on Teehee. And Teehee just keeps dying or not being too successful. Obviously, Teehee wants to get solo kills to the Juggernaut and whatnot. And that's possible if you get a Life Strike Array off. But it's not possible if you mess up as often as he's doing right now. Again, execution is mattering considerably for the guys at Nasty Potatoes. Uh, 
Okay, the sentry just to discover another sentry. They're gonna pretend like they don't see the sentry there. Or no, they're just giving it to the juggernaut. That's just weird. Okay, if I know the sentry got destroyed, so we're like, okay, screw it. We're not gonna go in because they have a sentry themselves. And the Rubik has Vendetta, so it actually has a good initiation tool with this. Uh, smoke also available on the Rubik, and he just changed to it, so he must be uh, smoking up with Raji. Oh, they are retreating from the attack from Nasty Potatoes. I don't know if they see this. They should have seen some of it. Yeah, there's the first TP coming up from the Timber Saw. Nasty Potatoes read this and think, ah, they know we're here. Where Psyonix keeps farming this top lane. Of course, the Magnus is looking for RP and a possible kill onto Psyonix, but it's a bit hard, especially because Pondo has just discovered himself. They have a scan, a TP is available for Pondo, but they don't have, he has no vision, so you don't know what he is coming in. And a TP is definitely not going to be worth it here for Pondo. The Shukuchi, they keep pinging him out, they know where he is. Uh, there's a second shockwave, and he's screw screwed himself over here. The swarm not gonna find him, but he will. He can't TP anymore. He still has the skewer though. Burst like stuns him in the middle of the skewer. Last second, he did miss though. Pondo has to TP now. No more time. Laguna's blade finishes him off, and they lose their enemy mid in this situation. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, they lose that. No big deal for that support kill. But of course, that mid that uh, mid laner is a bit more important. However, like I said, oh actually, Silence has recovered himself considerably. Wow, that's that's impressive. Just because the Midas in that kill. That's pretty good now. The Geekham is back in the in the lead. If Tihi again stops dying like he did, and he has double damage too, so he can utilize that pretty efficiently, especially if he gets the plus 50 damage. But probably not gonna have the talent before he activates the double damage. I think he wants to go into Eden. Oh no, did you not see him jump onto here? That was a terrible play. I mean, good job by Eden, I suppose. If he did jump at the last second, I couldn't really see, but it doesn't seem like he did anything special. He just stood on a tree and then didn't get hit by Light Strike Array. Which is again not really that special. It really doesn't even hit that hard with double damage. I mean, she's taking a catapult decently easily, but I would, expect, I would expect more. Did not see the Monkey King, but Lena, it's hard that she gets ganked, frankly. She has a magic stick and the Shadow Blade, so she can always retreat at any second. And Arcane Rune is marked, but where's the Arcane Rune in the top lane? They want to make sure that Lena can't take this bottle. It's an okay target for it. Yep. Yeah. With a shockwave, you can spam it more, and obviously the bottle makes it so you can use the arcane rune whenever you want and use the RP. Oh, they see this perfectly. That's a, uh, not a smoke gank for the guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Geek fam. Geek fam. They probably just assumed it was Alina, frankly. That was a really good scan. Oh, no, net. Uh, they don't know if he's alone, though. He could just be a bit of a trap. So now they're just trying to guide him and see if he's alone. The Monkey King has more movement speed than he does. He puts on a sentry. He sees the other sentry. He's like, oh, screw it, screw it, screw it, screw it. I have to leave. I have to leave. They have this whole area warded down. Good sentry, by the way. But that's his whole area warded down. Why doesn't reveal they have a sentry here, which is weird because uh, there's no reason to not reveal it because you have to destroy their sentry. Anyway, Net steals the tree dance, which is alright, but as a result, sacrifices himself. That was a weird play. Uh, I don't know if he was creating some space for Velo or what exactly, but he just decided to kind of kill himself against the enemy team. There's not much strategy to do that. I don't, I don't know if he was trying to steal tree dance or to run away for the Monkey King, because I think he was survived anyway, but... Oh well. Uh, Midas on the Weaver is actually really helping her out, though, in terms of net worth. He's surpassing the Juggernaut just barely. Yeah, just barely. I mean, they're really equal, but before they were, she was losing by a lot, and she's finally reached the likes of Lena. Sorry, the likes of the Timbersaw as well, who got his Bloodstone at decent timing and is now starting to can finally make use of it. He's going to go for Lotus Orb straight up after the Bloodstone. Oh, that's really clever. Keep making Arcane Boots and keep dispelling them by... Or taking them away by making items. Yeah, that's pretty smart. Because obviously, okay, boots always are disassembled. So you disassemble them next for Lotus Orb. And then go for Trial Boots or whatever later on. It's a pretty smart uh, tactic. Okay. So, Vela. I'm just always just laying creeps. Pretty easy, pretty easy for him, honestly. Be he careful, he has a Shadow Blade, this could go on the Magnus, but of course, without the help of Net, it was just a bit too far. That's to steal the Shockwave. The Shockwave is not bad if you do go as a Genki spot with Tihi. Meanwhile, on the top lane, they do kill the Weaver. I can only imagine with the se sequence of stuns and obviously the Omnisash committed. Yep. And the Weaver couldn't really time-lapse in time. That's the issue. If she doesn't have BKB or some way to kind of prevent all those stunnings. In fact, in this game, Lincoln's not even that good for you because, of course, you don't have much to really stop with the Lincolns. And she just had to go for the Dragonlance kind of generic build of, I don't really know what I'm supposed to build this game, but I need some stats. Yeah, that's a pretty good idea of the dragon. <laughs> it's a pretty good idea, honestly. Might just then Dragonlance and maybe get a Desolator later on to get a bit more damage. Go for, for pure pure glass canning. Because uh, it doesn't really matter otherwise. And 
polo texts. Why not? Bello similarly with these uh, centaurs, trying to get a bit of extra farm onto him. Alright, Tiki taking down a, or getting getting a valuable room. That's not bad. Hoo hoo, centaur goes down. That's pretty good. Uh, whereas oh, Death Sama, careful. Death Sama has managed to get a kill onto Net using the double damage. Uh, it does not a big a deal because Net obviously was in the middle of the lane or close to the lane trying to get a kill on else. A very unexpected result, or very very expected result by him. He was kind of hoping to die there. Yeah, the Geeks are already winning the game, but they're not settling the game yet, and that's an issue because enemy team does have a pretty decent late game and a good team fight. Of course, you don't have bad late game either with a lean and a waiver, and of course the Sanking and the Timber Sour are right at mid late game. Not like it's a ticking time clock for you, like I said, the enemy team doesn't have particularly better carries or anything of the sort but the better team fight could prove like an issue with the late game especially when you only thing you have for team fights is essentially an epicenter and the second can be useful but only as a burrow strike later on not really as an epicenter so he really needs to grab an axe and of course the timber saw we all know how useless it becomes in the late game being only a damage dealer that can't die which is not even that big a deal later on in the game um Teehee himself is going to go for the boots of travel next he already went to the bloodstone i really like the bloodstone pickup it's not that late considering he went for shadow blade first surprising actually only um i mean it's what minute 20 or so he pr picked it up 21 so that means that yeah i mean the average time is 15 but you delay that for five minutes because of the shadow blade tiki's quite content with that he's not gonna be able to get too many kills with it but oh well oh they gone to the mangas could burrow strike and ponlo has to skewer away he has a tp can they kill him in time they do have a lot of damage let's take a ray to prevent the tp they didn't need the damage they had a stun extra but of course they had it anyway and tiki will be getting that kill or yeah we'll be getting that kill onto ponlo getting a couple more bloodstone charges for both him and velo mm -hmm. every easy kill for them is actually another bloodstone charge in addition to of course this time it's a dead magnus so that's Good. But of course, the extra bullets, bloodstone charge here are very valuable. And Sionix himself going for the desolator now, starting to and starting to get, build up the damage. With this, Geek Fam are starting are going to be able to snowball out of control. This is what they're looking for. Desolator on the Weaver to deal damage, and of course, the two bloodstones that are going to help out both Alina and the Timbers out to a ridiculous extent. Meanwhile. The Sionic starting to heal up in the shrine. He wants to help out. Here's the help from the Timbersaw as well. You should cut down this phase. Oh, what is Timbersaw doing? Okay, he eats up in a whole army slash. Even the rock. Somehow still survives. Eventually denies himself. Says, yeah, screw it. I've survived long enough. I've done my job. Net comes from behind. They want to kill maybe Crimson. Did they steal a rock? Would they steal? No, it was only Fatal Bonds. So in the end, they can't even steal the Monkey King's ultimate either. So that was a, a waste of steal. How are the epicenters coming? And there's a bar strike from Raji. Only catching out the Monkey King. And they want to destroy Eden. And they will manage to do so from behind the lean. And destroys the Nyx Assassin as well. Oh, blitter rates him and Dehi is caught with the RP what are they gonna do Dehi's been stunned out he has to light strike array and has to run away will Dehi make it in time he's not fast enough the fairy soul stacks are not gonna help him he has to deny himself with a bloodstone but the po Ponlo is now caught out by the poor Rubik telekinesis skewer to bring him back to the tower can they fight him Raj is a burst strike and Sionx will almost die but time lapse in time both survive and they get the second kill on the Magnus in a row he was literally presented there just to die so uh, sadly the Magnus well not too happy about that. <laughs> Let's just say that Magnus was not too happy about that because he was hoping to get a kill that was a fantastic skewer too, and in the return they kind of destroyed him pretty easily. And with the Bloodstone, that means that both the Timbersaw and the Lena come back pretty soon. The Lena with 10 charges, the Bloodstone, the Timbersaw with 8. No big deal though, honestly, both of them are, are I mean, usually I would say, oh, terrible, but both of them have a good ability to take these charges. And of course, the fact that the Weaver is still farming pretty decently as a Midas gives you more confidence as a lineup asking them. Meanwhile, we were starting to see why the Monkey King Ultimate is not powerful. The Sankin could just go in and since the lack of damage extra damage that it adds to you now and of course the lack of basher it can just use his epicenter and completely destroy you and you can't do anything about it if i'm perfectly honest and monkey king is is uh, can stun him with his balance strike but that's it i don't think the rubik sees him that was an unfortunate steal by the rubik as well the fatal bonds but somehow it lasted the whole team fight he could have still own the monkey king's ultimate which is a bit more useful with the rubik because it's ranged but it's still not that useful so it's not that big a deal and the Roshan, yeah, tank it, tank it, Timbersaw, tank it, mm, yeah, that's it, that's it, tank the Roshan, my Stricker ready to hit it, Swarm as well, and Roshan is going to go down pretty easily, I mean, there's a lot of minus armor onto the Roshan with the Swarm, they even have the Desolator now, Ooh, Weaver is just showing it off to the Roshan, and this is an easy Aegis for them, Raji sees the Nyx Assassin, stuns him out first, they actually want to kill him off first, the Lucan Aegis, even the Lucan is quite committed, and Sama will just cease to exist, go into another plane of dimension, whatever and geek fam will happily take this rush on as well 
and that is 7,800 gold to their name, uh, or sorry, extra net worth to their name, in addition to having a great Aegis. Now for the Weaver, I can only imagine, yep, and of course the Trial Boots already completed on Mrs. Lena, who's going to be able to outrun the Juggernaut finally, as she was looking for this whole game. You know, she's not going to need the Fiery Souls anymore, she's just going to have Trial Boots, and Net, as the beautiful Net he is, Decided to steal or managed to steal Vendetta from the Nyx Assassin, preventing him from doing much. That was a great initiation, by the way, from the from the sanking from over here. Or sorry, was it over here or so? Oh, no, it was over here. It was over here. Just burst striking in. Very clever. Very clever. Okay, tower taken down by Sonics. Quite easy with this later. The Lena is coming in with a tile boot, so she could actually join in this team fight without a problem. The Lena already TP'd here. Oh, yeah, actually, she had, she literally did come in with the trial boots. Okay. The only to clear the wave. Seems like the Rubik doesn't want to go for the kill. Oh, if I'm Pondo, though. Pondo's in trouble. Telekinesis to move him forward. The Balance Strike stuns Alina, though, so they can't light strike array, but the Lugwins might already hit him. Dragon Slave will miss. Psionics didn't need that because he already had enough damage to destroy them anyway. Raji has a dust and could find Death Sama, but is none the wiser that Sama is coming around here. So in the end, yeah, he'll just walk near the sentry. Knows where Eden is. Didn't decide to <laughs> dust him because, of course, Eden just face boots right immediately as, as he sees the sentry. As soon as they see him, he has to face boot and take this away because it would be a possible dust and then you're screwed. Possible dust plus burrow strike and then you don't know what to do. The face boots allow you to, that split second to actually be able to evade the burrow strike somewhat and not do too badly. Oh, that's later plus... Plus, Desolator plus Diffusal Blade is now a combo. I like that. I mean, it could be a combo before anyway, but... Yeah, Desolator is not an orb effect either, so... That's nice. That means that the Psionics can now, you know, take away your mana, which is physical damage, by the way. And also deal damage to your armor. That's going to be hard to deal with if you are... If you're a Geek Fam, honestly, that's going to be the... Sorry, if you're an Astro Potato, it's going to be really hard to deal with. Taking away all the mana from a Magnus, for example, or from a Juggernaut can be really crucial. And of course, Juggernaut is a Mata style and Diffusal Blade, so he wants to do the same with the Weaver. But the Weaver is able to chase you and be more consistent about her last hits. If you don't catch her out with any sort of, you know, RP or anything of the sort, I doubt that she'll be killed. That's a weird disconnection, but of course, the Magnus has to opt out. Diffusal Blade on Sionx also gives him 25 Agility, which is something that Weaver loves to get because her Agility gain is not particularly the best, though it is better than the Juggernaut's 2.4. She has a 2.8 and gets a bit of extra armor against the Juggernaut damage, which is not bad. Especially because you uh, it's also looking for a level 50 or level 18, sorry. I don't know why I said level 15. Maybe old habits die hard. The level 3 time lapse is so valuable because it doesn't cost mana, so they'll be able to use it despite the fact that the Juggernaut is Monta styling you and destroying. I feel like they're saying something, but I have a muter or something. I don't know why. It seems like they're talking around. Like, they say no problem, even though nobody... All right, go. Okay. Sonic's being... Or, in general, this whole team is very, ni very nice about it. I think both teams know each other. So, I mean, they played in all of these tournaments a lot of times. It's nice to see a team both teams not harassing or destroying each other in lower tier tournaments. <laughs> all right. Uh, the Lina just keeps on farming a bit. Gets the uh, level 3 Laguna's Blade. That's pretty valid. Let me go for a scepter. You're up against a juggernaut. It's not a bad idea to go for a scepter. Increase your Laguna's blade damage by 25%, more or less. Actually, no, it's directly 25%, unless the enemy team has more magical resistance of some sort, which they don't. I don't think. I mean, they don't, I've never seen a pipe or anything of the sort. Nah. And nobody went for the magical resistance down yet. I mean, Nyx could go for it, maybe. But anyway, the Laguna's blade piercing magical immunity, being able to catch a juggernaut even through the blade fury is fantastic because he can't do anything while the blade fury is on, so there's no way he can evade it. And by doing that, well, you pretty much... You pretty much destroy anyone in, in Nasty Potatoes with that, uh, including the Juggernaut, because you can't evade the Laguna's Blade, that's too much damage, it's all pure damage, and in addition, the, the damage from the Weaver and from everyone else on your team is going to make sure the Juggernaut dies, and when he Blade Fears away, thinking, no, I'm finally safe because the Weaver can't really chase me, because he's dead or whatever, or he's busy with someone else, there, that's when you win. Okay, that's a Burrow Strike catching out the Nyx Assassin, that was fantastic Burrow Strike, the Chakram though is not so successful, and they'd also destroy the Rubik team in a couple seconds, Raji in trouble has to use the Epicenter, but can't because they don't want any more left, Velo is pulled back into the Monkey King Ultimate, also the upheaval, they use an RP for him, and they'll commit it to Velo, Velo's gonna throw down as well, but the Bloodstone used last second, they won't be able to get that kill onto him, that was a really good initiation from Nasty Potatoes, but they only catch two, or three rather, uh, Two and a half, I suppose, because the Deny Cat is a half. You take away the Bloodstone Charge, it's pretty useful to take away those Bloodstone Charges and Timbersaw. But not killing the Lena or killing the Weaver, which is your main targets, is a bit iffy. Um, they are the ones that were the one. They are the ones that were 
destroying your game after all. And the Weaver can continue, continue to split push and gain farm. Of course, going for Psionics was a really hard deal because, of course, she had an Aegis and she had a time lapse and she still has the, the Shikuchi. But King Fam themselves don't care that much about losing two supports. The Timber's not that big a deal. They can still defend this in the epicenter if the burst, if the. Sanky comes back in time, they're still waiting by 9,000 net worth, which is a bit of a considerable difference. Not that big a deal. Oh, no. why would you steal that? I don't even know what he stole. He stole healing ward. It's not even that big a deal. Why would you try to steal that? Get destroyed. N Nasty Potatoes may be proving me wrong and say, yeah, screw it. We only need to kill supports and we already won. Uh, the Weaver's already done a bit of his split pushing. That's pretty good. But of course, he decides to retreat and try to catch someone in the back lines. It's quite smart. Maybe Crimson, uh, Shukuchi. Oh, it finds Crimson. There it is. Easy kill onto Crimson. Swarm. Uh, start attacking him. Start attacking him really hard. No! Tiki even used a Shadow Blade to try to get the kill onto Crimson, but <clears throat> it was a bit too hard. The smoke ups on Crimson. Maybe uh, another smoke act to feel a bit more confident, knowing that they can actually turn this around. I mean, last game got turned around completely. <clears throat> or not last game, sorry. Uh, two games ago, it got turned around completely. Okay, Crimson taking down the ward at the base. That's pretty smart. I think it's like gem. No, just a sentry. Oh, no, gem is on Nyx's assassin. Okay. Gem is on Nyx's assassin. Desama happy to get that gem so he can see the Weaver and the Lina and the, the Sanking and the ward. So many things. The Sanking himself has decided to go for a gem so he can see the Nyx and the wards and the wards and mainly just the wards. The Nyx assassin is, I guess, annoying, but it's mainly the wards. And yep, an Aghanim Scepter coming out of the Lina. Very smart. She's going for the extra attack range. After all, the Ag Aghanim Scepter does give you a bit of stats and it's not bad to have if you're going for the kind of physical attack damage to Lina, so it's okay. And I do reckon Tiki should be able to destroy these lanes and, and clear them out for Nasty Potatoes quite easily. Okay, Velo, meanwhile, attacking these uh, ancient black tricks, trying to get that farm up for himself. Going for his Shivas uh, as his uh, item. Whereas Nasty Potatoes are trying to do a bit of a trap here. They get a really good scan. They know the enemy team is in the shrine, but they don't know how many of them are there, so it could be a dangerous play. Uh, Timbersaw is just actually farming. They might just find him alone. There's no TPs. They catch Velo. 20 stacks of reactive armor, though. Kind of annoying. Use the Lord's Sword on himself, and he should be fine in the long run. What is the Magnus uh, building? Okay, BKB. I'm not going for the Ags yet. I think Ags is a late game, late game luxury item if you really even care about it. It's not that useful. You rather go for the Vice or Shiva. It's more like if you have spare gold, you might as well go for the Ags. The Ags now is pretty decent, but it's not. It's cause more because the Magnus doesn't really have that many items to get. But you can always go for, like I said, utility like Shiva's BKB or alternatively set the Vice. Um, they could kill team, TMT if they did stun him out. I can't imagine a way, even with a Shadow Ward, that they could save him because they don't have that many Forge tasks on the team. There's an advantage you should be taking. You should be Taking care of this advantage, or it should be uh, using this advantage to your advantage. I guess I, <laughs> they say shoot to your advantage because Nasty Potatoes only has has no. They have zero four staffs. They have zero four staffs in the team. Four Midas's, but zero four staffs. The enemy team has no no Midas's, but mm, of course, actually zero four staffs in the team too. Well, a lot of magic sticks for some reason, strange reason. Um, hmm. But the whole point is the lack of four staffs on this team of Nasty Potatoes makes it sort of like a gank on Juggernaut. If he does get caught out by a stun, he can't really dispel with Blade Fury or anything. He's gonna die. Because you he, they're not gonna be able to four staff him away or try to save him with some sort of tactic. If he tries to turn away, he's done. Um, the Blade Fury will will get will not happen anytime because the burrow track is almost immediate. If you cover the the trees and you also have the telekinesis, you also have the the help from the Lina's Light Strike Array, if you go from Shadow Blade, it's definitely possible to kill the Juggernaut. The only thing they have to do is, again, take advantage of the lack of Force Staffs and be a bit more aggressive when the Juggernaut comes out. They've already managed to destroy the fire of both the mid-hero and the enemy offlaner, and this is another consideration, or something that we didn't consider, which is that the mid-hero for Geek Fam is much more of a damage-dealing carry, whereas the mid-hero for Nasty Potatoes is not really a damage-dealing carry. They were relying a bit on the Monkey King to be a, a bit of a damage-dealer to some degree, right? But the Juggernaut alone cannot carry his team in terms of damage. You have, you're fighting against a Weaver and against a Timbersaw. One is really squishy, but it's hard to kill, and the other one or, is very slippery, and the other one is really hard to kill, and, I mean, not squishy at all, he's just, he's just gone. So, how do you kill both of them with only a Juggernaut, who's the one dealing damage for your team, because the Magnus going to start retreating or not being as useful, you with the Skewers and the Shock Waves, you can't, especially if they can manage to kill the Magnus in the back lines, Magnus can't really do much, and this team fight potential is completely lost. And, you know, more so, if you can want to take advantage of this and try to fight between the RPs, it's definitely possible. Try to use a Smoke or something of the sort, bait out an RP, and then boom, you come back, and done.
Oh, Shade is guard for Velo, and that's pretty good. TMT, oh careful. Raji has a Burrow Strike available, so he can catch up on the pretty easily. So Onyx, oh ho, he's been skewered into the ward, but they already caught out the poor Monkey King. They're gonna kill him very soon. Laguna's Blade actually came out on TMT, and he's almost destroyed as he uses Glimmer King. The swarm is killing him, he has to destroy the swarm really soon, but Seonyx is going straight for the kill. They are only ones the juggler of this juggernaut, but he's gonna survive. Paulo does die though, however, and Eden in the back line is also somehow surviving because what? Okay, they barely dealt damage to him. They were not interested in him. There it is. He tries to um, get himself away. The swarm catches them, though. They have vision. Now I strike array. That's a dead monkey king. And they do catch up Pondo that engagement. Not force out the RP, but they can definitely push now, knowing that the RP is gone. That's why they're taking down these creeps lanes. Creep lanes. Juggernaut was so close to dying with the Blade Fury plus the Glimmer Cape plus, of course, the fact that he's trying to... Or the, um, the uh, help from the upheaval and everything else. Just really allowed him to survive. It was a good job of his team, honestly. Anyway, this is a tower that's been taken down easily by Geek Fam. I mean, out of the question. Out of the question, the tower will be taken down. And the melee racks will also be going down to Psyonix. That's enough damage for them. Velo happily TPing back. The smoke from Geek Fam allows them to, you know, retreat quick, quite quickly. And Teehee comes in with a Shadow Blade and wants to catch out TMT. Easy kill with Lysark Array, Laguna's Blade, a lot of damage. Velo coming in, has the Chakram, but they don't need the Chakram. The damage from Teehee in terms of physical damage is already enough. I don't know why Juggernaut was there, but he got surely, surely got punished for it. That's a mega kill streak for Teehee. A buyback forced on him. Not only so they can assume defend the Roshan, because the Roshan is about to be back up. And if they don't defend it, that's a buyback wasted for a team fight. You're going to fight against a team with Roshan. That is, there's no way you're winning that team fight. It's almost a guaranteed dieback. Kickfam is now completely healed up thanks to that shrine. And what nasty potatoes want to do here is fight the Roshan. It was 100% true. That was their goal all along. However, uh, even though they're fighting against an RP, they themselves have an epicenter ready. And also the Chakram. There's a smoke on both sides. Beautiful RP! Now the army size destroys two! And the buybacks are not gonna come out by Geek Fam because they know that that did not go their way whatsoever. D he has to run away, has the Shadow Blade. Luckily, um, Geek Fam will only lose two. That could have been much worse RP, but it was still all they needed. It was still all they needed to get this Roshan. And they will need to force a buyback on both of them. Frankly, I don't think it's a good idea. Getting that Roshan is so valuable. Really good play by Nasty Potatoes. They risked it, and this time, it worked. They didn't lose that game. They didn't lose... Or that team fight. They didn't lose uh, the game as a result. And they just took a Roshan. Granted, they don't take it that quickly, but hey, it's pretty okay. Uh, Net is, meanwhile, in the bottom list, says, Screw it, why not push a bit? I have Fate Bolt and Shockwave. I can eliminate Creep Waves quite simply. The rest of Geek Fam decide to back out. That's the normal thing to do. I don't know what Ned is doing, but Ned is being pretty ballsy. He has no TP. Actually, he has no TP. What the fuck are you doing, Ned? Yeah, he has to walk away. Walk away. Walk away, son. I mean, I know, they, I know they're I know they doing Roshan, but of course they don't need everyone in Roshan. They could TP someone bottom, but they were a bit scared. Nasty Potatoes is definitely scared of what um, Geek Fam can do. And they take a cheese with this one, by the way, so that's Magnus taking the cheese. Oh, wow. That's a lot of gold for Paul. That tower almost went down thanks to the creep push, so that's not entirely that bad. A tier 3 that almost dies because just a bunch of range creeps were attacking it in a Rubik. Sure, we'll take that any day. Ooh, ooh Velo, so unfortunate. He was so close to killing the monkey kick, but not, not no cigar, as they say. Uh, impaled, does catch up the Lina, careful. Uh, she could go down. Ooh, there's the help from the golem. T, he has to commit suicide with a bloodstone. And he will do so, so he'll be fine, but uh, that, uh, that's unfortunate for the guys at Geek Fan. Having to lose Alina and all that Boston charges. She's down to 11 now. Of course, they did take this top rack, so it's not like they're not still winning <laughs> by quite a lot. They also took down the tier 3 down bottom, which gives them a bit of extra gold from Teehee. Uh, give Teehee a bit of extra gold, so he didn't lose that much in that engagement. So they're still winning by, by a considerable amount. I mean, the 13,000 net worth in their favor is not just a joke. It's it's, a, it's actually a lot of net worth in their favor. The Abyssal Blade, though, does come out in the Juggernaut. He might be able to deal with the Weaver a bit better now. There's no linkage in the Weaver, so they have no way of, you know, Helping her out in this situation. She is going herself for the Assault Karas, which is weird considering I'm seeing two Assault Karas being built. No, it's Daedalus for Lina and Assault Karas for Weaver. That's interesting. Okay, Raji got skewered away. Oh, a bit on the Weaver. They still have a BKB though, so Yannis is going to start fighting. They want to kill the Sarah first. The Epicenter comes out. TMT starts to spin. But that spin is not really doing or helping anyone. And in the end, the RP catches four. The RP was magnificent. And with the upheaval, they can't go anywhere. But finally, they counterattack. This, this timber is way too tanky. 
They take down the Magnus. As they take down the Juggernaut, they're going to stun him as he comes back up. He can't do anything. He's been stunned out and now destroyed. The gem also comes for free as that little, the, you know, that little soap you get at the bottom of the gift basket. You don't care about it, but hey, why not? It's a, it's a soap anyway. With this Geek Fam, we'll be taking down some racks too. The only buybacks available are on Ponlo and Warlock. It's going to be a GG. Ponlo calls it. Geek Fam, we'll be taking game number two against Nasty Potatoes. That's it, guys. That's it for the SEA games for today. The next game will be at in in four hours at 7 CEST between the teams of Singularity and Anji. And that will be casted by myself as well. I'll be casting EU for one day just because, well, it's the final. And, nah, I'm kidding. <laughs> because, of course, Joe DX right camp today. But that said, it's going to be a final best of five but with one one game advantage. So it's not that clear to, to as to who is going to win yet. But Singularity does have a, a little up, upper hand. Tune in then if you enjoyed the cast. My ca my name is D Swordfish. I've been your caster for today. Feel free to follow me on Twitter where you can also also find the replays for all the casts that I do and that way in the YouTube channel and that way you can you know watch them and, and enjoy and that's it guys uh, I am off for today so enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you guys at 6 for another appointment for some Dota 2 between Angie and Singularity see you guys then